So hi everyone, uh, welcome to the latest video in my Writers in Conversation series. Today I'm joined by Taylor and we're going to be talking about writing middle grade and young adult fiction. So firstly, um, I think we'll just like do a little introductions about ourselves. So Taylor, do you want to go first with that? Yeah, yeah. And and thank you very much for, uh, for, for organizing this. It's really fun to talk about this. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, so my name is Taylor Ting. Um, I am actually new to the writing world. I had a, a, a long career that really spanned through um, mostly uh, advertising and entertainment. Um, so my my kind of storytelling background is really in animation and editorial and, and in design. And, and so um, I'm kind of just delving into this world um, probably a little later than I want to be. And And my focus has been around Middle grade, I have two daughters that are of those ages, eight and 12. Um, so my life is really focused in there. And it's also a place where a lot of storytelling um, was really seminal for me that kind of when I look back at, at those those tales and those stories that really kind of shaped me um, are really of that time. Yeah, that sounds really, really interesting because like it's obviously really personal to you. And um, I know before this video, we were talking a bit about how um, like you've worked in animation a lot and obviously that's a very different side of storytelling so yeah 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 so uh, you know i think that um and maybe this is one of the things that i liked a little bit about mg as well it is that um and i think if you see a lot of the graphic novel um kind of boom happening right now um, which i think is um I t is, is a lot like storyboarding um so for me coming out of something where it was a very visual experience um, and a very kind of edited cut experience um, and admit uh, imagining scenes and kind of simplified scenes really fit really well for 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 middle grade. Um, and I remember a lot of those those stories um, were a certain amount of formula as well that kind of goes into kind of kind of entertainment thinking. so so I kind of came to it from from that entertainment side more than I think from the obviously from the literary side uh, for sure. But uh, you know, one of the things that that I find that's really interesting about MG um, that I think is a little bit different um, or difficult, and I think you and I were just talking about this a little bit uh, uh, before we started here too, is kind of holding yourself in place with middle grade. Um, and I think that uh, right now uh, it's very it, it, it's a rather confusing genre in that it actually spans even within itself. So you have you know, people that, you know, eight to 12 and, you know, an eight to 10 year old and, and, a, and, a, and a 10 to 12 year old are radically different people to me. Um, I have two living under my roof. Um, and so, um, you know, between just, you know, subject matter and, you know, romance and language and violence and issues and things like that, there's a real span between what I think people are classifying middle grade is. And I think a lot of it's now slipping into YA I think there's probably other places where YA slips, the adult slips down into YA as well. So there's kind of this strange compression happening, I think, within story dynamics um, that I see in uh, in middle grade kind of needing to be defined. So I probably I probably fit more closely bleeding up towards the YA side of things, where where you know getting a little bit more serious. Um, but it's also trying to write in simplified sentence structures that aren't dumbing it down, I think, as well, which I think is really a real challenge, to be quite honest. Um, I, I love run on sentences and in middle grade. Um, it's not always the best thing and something I'm, you know, I'm learning too. I mean, you said that you were you were kind of envisioning a new manuscript that you're not sure exactly where it fits in. Did, what what for you, kind of what are you finding as far as those those break points between this or that. Yeah, like it's sort of like the, well, the break points. I'm not really sure where exactly they are because um, like I've only written YA fiction up towards this point. So, and my YA fiction does sort of like tend to skew a bit older. So my protagonists tend to be sort of like 17, 18, 19. And right. I'm aware with my YA fiction, a lot of my readers are adults as well. And like the majority of my readership for like my Untamed series are adults. Um, because I was quite surprised at my first book signing when only one teenager turned up <laughs> and everyone else yeah. was just, like these middle-aged women. And they yeah. were like so enthusiastic. And it was at that point that I realized that a lot of YA is actually read by adults. 
Yeah. So, yeah, I do sort of write views of like upper limit of YA and a couple of times I've caught myself like thinking, oh, maybe this is like too, slightly too much adult content in there and I'm like, trying to like sort of bring it back down into sort of acceptable YA rooms. So, yeah. yeah. One of, I was going to say, one of, one of the things that, that um, and again, kind of being new to, to the game in this, I haven't had the experience of, of so I, I, I'm on submission right now for, for a debut. So I, I really haven't gotten to the place where I've had uh, to face the, the publishing machine in, in that way to really understand where someone's kind of holding, you know, here's the tier between X, X and Y. Mm. But, um, you know, it seems to me in the world of, of young adult, you have kind of, I guess it was a, is a chiclet, I guess, is kind of the, you know, there's a lot of, uh, to me, it's been pushed down into and maybe even cannibalized a lot of that storytelling. Um, as much as it's opened up to adults, I think to get into fantasy um, or things that are that are more fanciful, semi-magical than they probably would otherwise. Um, but I don't know if you see kind of even in your, you know, because YA seems like you can deal with almost any issue you want. Yeah. Um, but still, do you find that there's a there's a roof to it where you kind of go too far that you feel you start alienating your reader? Well, so I'm drawn to really dark stories. And a lot of the time, I'm just wondering if I'm making it way too dark, even for YA. But then then I'll read some other like YA books that are really dark. And I feel, well, if they've done it, then I can do this as well. And, but, but there is like a market out there for really dark YA. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like as we were talking before this video, um, I've got like this tentative idea for a middle grade series. And I was just like reading through my outline for it just before this video, actually. Um, and I was just thinking, like, am I making this way too dark for middle grade? Because I'm not like experienced like in writing middle grade and writing for that audience. And I'm very much aware that sort of in a way, my outline at the moment does read like one of my typical YA stories. It's just with younger characters. But I've kind of got like the same sort of content. Um, well, I mean, I haven't got like all like the relationship stuff yet because that's not yeah. really sort of appropriate for sort of like the eight to twelve year old market yeah, but, yeah. I, I think it's having the um so it's kind of framing your mindset i think in mm -hmm. a in a in a and i really don't try and write for eight girls i don't think uh, I, I can i think th i think that's also a different kind of place or entry point because they're kind of coming out of chapter books and 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 their book is really opening opening up so um the span between that and a 12 year old is just drastic to me mm -hmm. um or to me um and uh but I think that keeping in a, let's just go with a 12 year old's mindset, mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to write at, down to a 12 year old is such a, a hard thing to do. And so kind of putting myself in, in, in that memory, it's a lot harder than putting myself in the memory of a 17 year old. Um, yeah. You know, when, when I understood the world and issues and I was dealing with ideas of independence and injustice, um, and, and I think that's one of the other things about the thematically, um, and I've heard some other people talk about this. There was, um, Michelle Susterman who just did a, a really cool, uh, she's a, a, a middle grade writer and, and I think she's a ghostwriter as well, uh, mm -hmm. did a nice piece that was about the difference between YA and, and, and middle grade and, and one of her real uh, connections was was that you know middle grade is always about connecting back to the home, or back to this idea of home, whereas is why is much more interested in the you know kind of the world beyond and how you change the world and um, and so uh, I think that that's become kind of a a, you know, a, a tentpole per se you know, kind of in my writing is is am I am I writing for a character who still wants to connect back to some idea of a family unit, whatever that family unit actually is, or, or some sense of safety or security. Uh, that that's, seems to be something that's been apparent in, in my uh, two books so far, um, which are really, you know, one is, one is about dealing with loss and understanding what a new family is. It's about a character who loses her mother and winds up going on a really crazy, balloon trip it's kind of a strange roundabout type of thing to you know finding herself and her identity and with her father um and the one i'm writing now is 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 kind of about being abandoned in in, in plain sight um and 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 so they're but they're all kind of dealing with 
being under the lens of 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 a, a home or or kind of an, uh, framing themselves to an adult you know uh, point of view. Um, anyhow, um, so I mean, I think that those are probably the, the 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 two hardest things that that I find. I think language, to be quite honest, is the easiest thing for me. Um, uh, you're keeping, you know, it's, I, I would love to use bad words a lot. Um, mm -hmm. and, and as I can get to like bloody hell is about as, as far as I, I, I can get right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and keeping out of romance, um, is, is certainly easier. Violence is obviously the weird one, I think. Um, and even writing, you know, dark things there, I think there's a lot of dark middle grade and dark, but it's really the power of like how, how, uh, how evocative or empathetic is the storytelling that allows it to, to the reason for it to be dark? But mm -hmm. you know, I mean, how do you how do you how do you make choices kind of in in darkness? It, you know, when you're when you're when you're exploring that, is it just because it's it's the mantle you kind of have to put on, or is it does it actually feed the story into a into a particular direction? Well, yeah. Well, like when I'm writing YA, I just love to make my stories as dark as possible, just because that's <laughs> what I'm really drawn to, and I love reading dark stories. And like, I really like it when like something gets like really disturbing and creepy, and like it's that kind of um, fiction. Because like at the moment, I'm writing a lot of YA thrillers, so like I can get away with being extremely dark with those, and um, just like building up on like the tension and making it sort of like almost like verging into horror as well. Yeah. So, I'm like really in that mindset at the moment with, with writing YA, that sort of like that really dark, terrifying, disturbing, creepy atmosphere. And I do love writing that sort of atmosphere. So I'm just trying to like transfer that onto like my middle grade project. But it's like, I, I don't want to like make these children like cry. Cause I remember when I was um, like 10 or 11 and I read this really disturbing book. I think it was actually an adult book, but it did actually make me cry at that age. And I sure. was like, I was really kind of traumatized by it. So obviously I don't want to be doing that, but at the same time, I do like traumatizing my reader. Like, especially in, like in YA, but I'm just like, is that appropriate for middle grade? So, yeah. Well, I th and again, I think it's, 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 it's to the, uh, it's to the effect is, is you're, you're, you're trying to elicit an emotion, but it's yeah. the, really the quality of the emotion, I think, than, than, than just the shock value. So, I mean, cause those are the things that I think as a kid that, you know, whether it's R.L. Stein or Stephen King, you know, the, the, the same things I think kind of keep you up at night. They're, they're the bumps and, 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 and the weird things and the things that almost seem like they're real, but aren't, you know, those are the things that really, I, I think haunt the mind. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, so Jaws is my favorite book uh, of all, of all times, favorite movie, favorite everything. I think it's it just, it's, it's, it is such an allegory for all sorts of, of uh, things about humanity, but but because it's plausible, all of the all of the real gore, all of everything that goes along with it, um, uh, it really speaks about a side of, of of humans. And so, so I think in that regard, it really works. And and I think that uh, you know R. L. Stein, who writes all the Goosebumps stuff. Um, you know, I mean, that guy, I don't know how many hundreds of stories that guy is, you know, has written, but he knows how to kind of, I think he's, I think he's great about being able to just tweak a little bit of disturbing, you know, in, in young minds um, mm -hmm. that kind of just like, it just leaves it there and lets them wonder. And I think it's kind of like, well, I, the reason I even uh, raised Jaws is it's, it's, it's what's not there that allows you mm -hmm. to, to envision it. I think that's the most terrifying things for young kids is the fact that you leave like open space for them to really imagine. Yeah. Um, and that's, and that's, I know, uh, thinking about the Goosebump series and like they're, they're, they're kind of rot, um, fraught with that, um, which mm -hmm. is cool. Um, I mean, the, uh, the Untamed series though is, isn't it, there's, it, it it's somewhat science-based, isn't it? Um, yeah, so it's dystopian, um, but it's got quite strong fantasy elements, but it has got like science fiction elements sort of running throughout the basis of the society. So, I mean, yeah, like that series does get really dark. And like originally it was um, with an American publisher um, uh -huh. in sort of 2015, 2016. And they actually marketed it as edgy young adult because they didn't feel that they could just market it as young adult because they said that it wasn't really appropriate for readers who are like age 14. So uh -huh. they marketed it as edgy young adult. But I think it was like 16 or 17 years plus was what they were saying was the ideal target market. 
And that really surprised me because I'd written it with the intention that it would be a YA title. Uh And they were kind of saying like it was more crossover for adult because of how dark it gets. And like book three does have like a lot of torture scenes. So yeah, that is quite dark. But yeah, like what you were saying about how um, sort of like the darkness in books is all about humanity and like looking at what sort of like human nature is capable of. Yeah. I think that does tie in a lot with sort of like the darkness in my Untamed series. And yeah, like I was just really surprised um, when the publisher um, told me that they would be marketing it as edgy young adult. You um, know, I, uh, yeah. I, so I was talking about this with someone else and, and, and in particular about kind of darkness or, or violence. And, and I think it's about, or as, as I've lived it with, with younger, um, with young kids, it's, there's kind of the, the gratuitous violence where something mm-hmm. happens um, and but then there's someone actually doing harm to another person, mm-hmm. and and the meaning of them. So like a torture scene, like that's a you know it's a it's a very intentful mm-hmm. action as opposed to something which is defensive or whatever, slashing a throat. You know, like hor- mm-hmm. horrible things in and of themselves, but they kind of happen quickly. And so it's this idea of holding someone's attention in the fact that I'm taking someone through, in this case, pain. Um, and I think that's whether it's it's um, it's physical or or, or emotional, uh, you know, those are things that I think that younger kids haven't. Um, they just haven't had the experience to play around with those ideas enough. So uh, I think that's a place where I wouldn't say treading lightly, but treading responsibly um, is kind of a, a, a I don't know. A, a, I think about it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm I'm about to write a scene in 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 the book I'm writing now that that has um, it's kind of a torture scene is more of a, me- a mental one than than anything um, and uh, and it's going to be kind of a place for for my main character to connect with the ultimately kind of a dark family secret um, but uh, but I'm really kind of dreading it because I don't know exactly how far I should go with it. And I think I just kind of, you have to write it and, yeah. and obviously get, you know, get response. But the funny thing is, I, you know, I'll put things out, you know, and this is another thing. You, it's interesting you said this about, uh, maybe just about, the. I, I, I'm interested in the difference between the American publisher's opinion of that and, and the ones in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, because obviously in, in, in middle grade, you have different gatekeepers. So the primary buyers aren't necessarily going to be the person that's reading it. They might be teachers or librarians as well. So you have this added filter um, of kind of looking through, uh, yeah, or just an, an, another gatekeeper that that needs kind of approval to even get you know to it. And I think there's a lot of places where adults don't read enough in those genres to understand what's there, um, mm-hmm. to understand actually what kids are are consuming to begin with. In, in, in many cases yeah definitely because um like in the uk there isn't really sort of the label of middle grade so much you've got um children's stories and then you've got teenage fiction which is yeah the YA. so like in bookshops you've typically you'll have like picture books chapter books going up to sort of like age eight and then after that you've then got um the category of teenage fiction which includes um mainly ya but you do get like some middle grade titles especially like if you're looking uh-huh. at published in America and then seeing those books on our shelves they will usually be in the teenage section so yeah. there's not so much of sort of like a distinction between those categories over here um like I was looking in a bookshop the other day and I was quite surprised because some titles that I would typically think were definitely middle grade were in the YA section yeah. and then you do end up therefore getting sort of like nine and ten year olds reading books like The Hunger Games with like children killing each other and yeah. Um, like they are like exposed to a lot of YA titles perhaps earlier on than you, they would be in the US just because we haven't got sort of that distinction between middle grade and YA here. Yeah. Um, like I first came across the term middle grade just like through the online writing community because it's like it's not really a thing in the UK here. So there is like this big gap, um, the way books are marketed here where you've either got books for teenagers or books for children up to the age of eight. There's nothing sort of yeah. like in between. Um, yeah. Although books do exist, it does get hard for children of those to find them. It's a, it's so uh, this is a so I have an interesting um, opinion 
of it because I'm I'm trying to write adventures ultimately um, that, that, that might have be thought provoking and have be poignant in certain ways and and but but not moralistic in in, in, in any way um, and then there is a um, you know a, a a mass of of middle grade that's really dealing with um, a lot of issues that I think that are being put on kids based on the pressures of the parents. Um, and I don't even say this to make a judgment, but if you look at the amount of, you know, anxiety, my, my wife is, works for a, for a school, uh, she's a counselor for a school. So, um, so we're kind of steeped in, in the dynamics of, of young, young lives and everything they're going through. Um, but the, you know, if you look at everything from the wonders of the worlds to the, the gut is another one recently that kind of dealing with, um, you know, with, with unusual circumstances um, or, or, uh, or, you know, people with uh, physical or mental challenges and things, and they're really great books, but there's, there's, there's kind of that. And then there's just adventure. And so you, one of the things I think is that the parents kind of lean towards, you know, this, uh, this kind of genre of this has to teach my child a lesson type mm -hmm. of thing, as opposed to this, any, any and all of it has to allow my child to have a love of reading and, mm -hmm. and just connect with storytelling at large. And, and I think that you can have both of those genres. I'm seeing a ton of ghost stories now mm -hmm. popping up in, in YA, which just says that humans are humans that all have different predilections and want different types of, of stories. And those just kind of fuel them. And, and so you like mentioned the Hunger Games. So, you know, the Hunger Games to me is the modern version of Lord of the Flies mm -hmm. in, you know, you know, bad things happened in that book. And I, you know, I wasn't ready for, for that when I read that, you know, that when sixth grade or seventh grade mm -hmm. and, 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 and it was horrible because these were you know, like, what happens when society goes away and people don't know the rules and, 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 but the, the death in it was meaningful. And I think that that was the other thing is like the, it wasn't just it wasn't just someone died and someone someone died for a reason and did I agree with it or not? Um, and I think that that that's the place that really moves kids into thought, I guess, because this is all goes back to kind of like what do I what do I take about from this and what of it is shareable? You know, how do I talk about a book? Because I can talk about any aspect of it, but what's my emotional takeaway? And for for middle grade, it's 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 finding that, um, w without going too heavy into it, it's being able to have some some emotional takeaway that they can kind of practice and 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 try on because they're not you know they're not kids and they're not adults, and and so they need to play in both, but they need to be able to lean back into the safety of the other. Um, but so I, I I like the idea of of middle grade kind of pushing higher towards YA. Because I think that that's the world they live in, and yeah. and I think the kids see a lot more of it than we give them credit for. Um, yeah. And and uh, I'm kind of ranting on, but one one of the one of the things that that's that kind of formulated a perspective of my life is that my parents talked to uh, I have one other brother. They talked to my brother and I like we were real people. They never talked to us like we were children, which is and, and they didn't talk to us about everything. But I have the same thing with my children, which is that if they're interested and have a real question, I'll do my damnedest to answer it. And so, you know, what what they're capable of understanding and the vocabulary that they have to use to explain their emotions, um, I think is, a, is an outgrowth of, of, of that exercise. And so I think parents, especially in American parents, need to be a little bit more fearless that way. Sorry, yeah. a, lot, a lot of opinions there, but. but. <laughs> no, I definitely agree with that. And, um, like I know in sort of like the YA readership, um, typically you'll get parents thinking that there's certain topics that cannot be um, sort of like explored in YA and they'll think that they're too adult or that those things just aren't appropriate for teenagers at all. But I think it's important that we let these um, children and teenagers decide what is appropriate for them to read because if they're, they're exposed to pretty much everything that adults are exposed to because yeah. we're, we're all living in the same world. So it's like, we have to make the fiction for them realistic and reflect what they're seeing without right. sort of like pretending that these things don't exist. So that's one thing that I really like about YA fiction with how just how dark it can go. Yeah. But 
also how like the people that complain about these topics being in books are nearly always the adults and not the teenagers themselves are reading it they're really like enthusiastic about this fiction because it's the authors being honest with them whereas like the parents are still trying to like shield them in a way yeah um and like, I have noticed with reviews of my um, Untamed series where like people are complaining about it being too dark, it's nearly always the adult readers are complaining it's too dark. And they're sort of like deciding what parameters like are acceptable for a YA readership. Yeah. And it's, n- it's not really the teenagers that complain saying, oh, it's too dark for me. It's, it's always adults. And I just find that really interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, uh, uh, I mean, certainly in, in, uh, in the states, I think there's a kind of a, a certain amount of outrage that <laughs> that's that's built into things. But I think for books, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, it's a double standard because I don't think you have this as much for movies um, because I don't think you invest in a movie in the same way that you invest in a book. Mm-hmm. And and I think that the ideas wear heavier when you know when you're when you're flipping through pages and just the sheer time that you spend with yeah. you know connecting to a character and the depth of it. Um, you know, it's a much more of an intimate act uh, in, in in that way. Um, and if I think if you if you're uh, a person of any vulnerability and you allow a character like that to really uh, you know cut through, um, you know, they're really really powerful ideas. And so I think as you know as 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 an art form, you know, it has it has a, m- a much much broader voice that way. So I I can see that. I mean that 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 makes sense. I was thinking about. Stand by me as, um, I guess, as a kind of counter to my point, but as a as a story, you know, what I what I take away from that from from that story is is much more about that. There's there are different types of people in this world and different types of families that I might have all seen the same way, and they have different lives and they're and they're not all good, mm-hmm. um, and but I live next to them, and and I have to uh, I have to collide with them. And and that idea, the openness of 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 kind of discovering that, but not really knowing what to do with it, um, it, it just it's another layer of awareness that you kind of put out into the to the world. So I think as as authors being able to 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 dial in to those places, I think that's the places where you can really tweak people um, the hardest. And if you push it a little dark, then you know uh, it's uh, you can really really push them over the edge to kind of feel something they really really aren't ready to feel. Um, and I think there's a certain responsibility to that too, or I would hope, you know, yeah. um, otherwise it's, you know, I think there's lots of room for, for, for formula, um, you know, storytelling. I, I, I might be actually one of those people, but, um, but uh, yeah, I, um, you know, I, one of the books I was thinking about, which I just read recently, which was the 10,000 doors of January. Um, which I have, have you read that yet? not know so so uh, i would recommend it for for j- just on the on, on the cell it's just a wonderful book um and but based on this conversation what i find so interesting is it was it's an adult book and uh and if you listen to alex H- haro um talk about it you know she gets a lot of grief from people from ya thinking you know this was a ya book and it's really an adult book i could actually make the case it's a middle grade book because other than a few bad words, it's it's no stranger or darker than Wizard of Oz or going down the rabbit hole or a whole slew of you know roll doll uh, you know stories you know which are which are really really wicked. Um, mm-hmm. So I think it's really interesting because that book it, you could almost drop it on 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 any shelf for an advanced reader of that of that genre, and I actually really think it would work. Um, but it's and it's beautiful. I mean, it's like drippingly beautiful um, as far as like the the, the actual prose. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so like if you're thinking about now kind of going down to middle grade, are you reading other uh, stories? I think you were reading Westing Game. Yeah. Or, uh, um, I mean, are you reading kind of other things in that genre to kind of bring you? uh kind of into that mindset or into that voice or you or if you and if you are are you finding a delineation between the the way that those our authors are writing um yeah so like i have started reading a lot of middle grade um particularly like thrillers and mysteries because like that's sort of the genre i want to write within that readership um so at the moment i'm reading the lost twin by sophie cleverly 
which is a boarding school mystery. Um, it is so good. And like one thing I've really noticed um, that, um, that book does and also the Western game is there seems to be much more of an emphasis on cliffhangers at the end of chapters. And like, I, d I just really love that because like I'm sort of like noticing all these sort of like literary devices and little like narrative techniques like that. And I'm just sort of like making notes as I read. And I'm trying to find like the differences between YA and middle grade. And there aren't actually as many differences as I thought there were going to be. Um, so like obviously you've got younger characters, but yeah. like Sophie Cleverly's book does get quite dark in places. and like you could easily like if you just sort of like thought of that main character as an older teenager it would read as a YA novel I'm sure so totally. yeah like there's, there's really not as many differences between it as I thought there was going to be um which on the one hand I'm like really relieved about because I feel like more sort of like equipped to write a middle grade story as well because um it's not as different to YA as I was previously thinking but then yeah. Like, on the other hand, I'm still, like, wondering, like, just how dark I can go with it, sort of, like, not sort of, like, encroaching too much. Um, sure. But, yeah, like, reading, um, like, because I've actually got, like, a pile of um, middle grade titles now, because I'm starting a MA in creative writing at Kingston um, uh -huh. next month. Well, ne next week, I suppose it is. I keep forgetting yeah, it. Yeah, lucky you. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, and there I'm going to be focusing on writing for children, so predominantly middle grade and young adult. So at the moment, I've got like this massive reading list, and it was quite cool because cool, we could choose which titles we wanted on our reading list. Like we had to have yeah. like within the genres we were writing, then like some prize winners and bits like that. But um, yeah, like the more I read of middle grade, the more I find like I really love it, and it's not too different from YA. Um, so yeah i've just got like this huge stack of books on my desk at the moment i'm just like <laughs> going through and like it's just so wonderful like knowing that i've got to read these because it doesn't feel like work but I've, like yeah it. like i'm really looking forward to it and yeah i think the fun the fun thing about writing for for kids that of that age too is you know uh so i have girls which is kind of my you know so it's kind of the focus of, of my lens but looking at like eight and nine year old girls like they're evil and, and i don't mean that like i really think they're evil but they're like they're wicked to each other and mm -hmm. um but they're wicked like adults are, are are to each other and and but they're like you know boys are kind of bombastic and they're like i'll hit you and they're whatever like mm -hmm. like like girls will, will like, like scoriate each other at, at like at, at that age but they're emotionally ready to, to to think about these types of things and and you know i, I always think about like uh, you know like you read the potter series you know so so the first i don't know three books total middle grade yeah last books total ya and then you have what is it, like book 4 um is like right at the mix of like this transition between voices mm -hmm. where where like you know romance and death and things but the, the other thing is like the kids are mean in it mm -hmm. and and so there's some there's a real honesty to that um and it's not being again gratuitous with them just being mean but being able to play with those voices but like i don't know if you remember the time of like like the first time you swear you know swore at someone or you know like those moments which were such big deals like you would i for me i'd practice this in my head and and like one day like i was going to use like you know say say this thing and then you said it and i sounded it i came out wrong and you know i got laughed at and everyone like well you know walked away and i was like oh you know like I'll, I'm, I'm forever you know torched you know in life from, from this um but those are like big moments where where you're like you're you you get to try these new things and i think that's the fun thing about writing for that age is is when you're older you're already in that mode so mm -hmm. this is this idea of going back and forth and and what that feels like to kind of go back and forth in that moment um i think that's one of the most fun parts of writing for for that voice mm -hmm. um and uh I don't know, and there's just like a lot of characters. Uh, I don't. I don't know if you've ever read the Mysterious Benedict, the Sis, Mysterious Benedict Society, but there's a little girl named Constant Contrer in it who is just horrible. She's just a horrible. Um, she's just kind of a lousy person in the way that like people are kind of lousy people, and she has a real reason, and she's super funny in it. But but she's like this great comedic voice that 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 is almost border satire because she really really speaks truth in 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 a lot of things and 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 that's the other thing i think i like about writing for kids is they say really direct things 
that adults wouldn't say. Um, and so it's a different type of power, and a, um, uh, but it can be much more slashing than, than something that's actually slashing, I think, you know, in, in, in that way. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, I think that, that if we, you know, I grew up with stories that were the hobbits of the world and the Lord of the Rings and things like that, you know, so, you know, I was an adult when Harry Potter came out, um, you know, and I had like, you know, Harry, Harry the Spies of the world, which were like, to me, is like a quintessential kind of middle grade book. You know, Harriet is like, I love that character because she's just horrible to people, but, um, but she's super funny. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't even think that book can be written now. Um, and I think the Mysterious Bank Be Societies are kind of a follow on to, to, to that. Um, and, but I think in a lot of cases, the one thing that, that I always loved about it is they were also a way to show adults as being really these fallible, imperfect people. Yeah. And, and, uh, and you can make a lot of commentary, um, in a very few words about, uh, adults and the choices they make and how the world is, is organized and led and X, Y, and Z, you know, uh, the, you know, Phantom Tollbooth is probably one of my favorite books, um, which to me is just about apathy. And, um, and it's such like, if you read it as an adult, um, I got it, you read it dr during during the coronavirus, like it has a weird, uh, like uh, overtone, um, that, that is very, very adult. Um, and, uh, and just kind of like the life is droll and all sorts of things. And so, uh, um, so again, I, I, I think it's, I think it's neat because, because speaking as kids, you really get to tell adults who you think they are <laughs> in many cases, but, um, so, so are you going to, you know, how how will you go through like your choices of 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 diving into a story? Because one of the things that I'm really interested in talking to people is about, you know, uh, you know, I, I have a backlog of stories. Which one do I choose? How do I take it through its paces to actually get to a place where I'm going to say uh, I'm going to commit to it? So how do you approach that? So I actually work on multiple projects at the same time. Um, so I pretty much just sort of like work on whichever one is sort of like inspiring me or like grabbing me that day. And I just feel that I've got to write it. So it does mean I end up with a lot of projects that are like unfinished. And once I say, oh, I'll go back to it. And sometimes I do go back to them um, like years later, because the one that I've just finished recently was one I started in about 2014. And sure. I remember like I was really inspired by writing it then and I just felt like I really need to tell that story but I stopped writing at that point because I didn't feel I had the experience to tell that story because it was actually um about psychosis and oh. I felt like I hadn't had experience of psychosis at that point so I thought like I can't really tell this story in like a, a powerful meaningful way that I need to so I shelved that manuscript but then as it happened, when I was 22, I developed brain inflammation, which then caused me to have a psychosis. So then I then ended up with first-hand experience of like the disorder that I'd been trying to write about. So recently I went back to that manuscript um, and I was able to sort of like put so much more into the story. And I just felt that that was the story that I needed to be working on then because I'd had this first-hand experience of psychosis. So I felt like I, I knew how to handle it more tactfully than I had been before. So that was a case of like a manuscript really calling to me. And I just felt like I absolutely had to work on that manuscript too. So sort of like completion of a final draft at that point. But yeah, at the moment I'm sort of like in between projects. Um, uh -huh. Like I'm not really sort of like under deadline. I've got like edits to do on a science fiction manuscript. But um, yeah, in terms of writing a sort of like brand new first draft, I've just got sort of like several ideas sort of like boiling away on the back burner. And I, I, I delve in and out of them just sort of like as I feel inspired to. And I guess when it gets to the point where one of them's got about sort of like 15,000 words, I then feel that it is sort of a viable manuscript. And yeah. at that point, I will then switch to just writing solely on one. But yeah, at the moment, I'm... I'm I've got like several ideas, but I'm not sure which is going to be the one that I'm going to sort of like take forward and just work on sort of like religiously at the moment. And do you, do you outline? Are you? Or, <laughs> or, 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 or yeah, how, uh, yeah. How do you how do you how do you organize? I, I guess in in the beginning. Um. Yeah. So like, well, a big thing about like why I love writing 
is I absolutely adore writing first drafts because I don't know what's going to happen and it's me exploring at the same time as my characters are exploring and um, especially when I'm writing thrillers I don't know until the end of the first draft who actually did the murder or did the crime or whatever so yeah. I find that really fascinating and I can just like throw in so many twists that I don't see coming and that make no sense whatsoever to the plot at that point because I'll go back later and like set all the groundwork for the twist later on with all the foreshadowing. So yeah, like, cause I don't do any planning or outlining first before I start writing. It does mean I give myself so much extra work during the edits because yeah. I very much try and like make everything work. And often when I get to the end of like first draft, it's only at that point that I know what the manuscript is that I'm actually trying to write and what sort of like the core of the plot is, what the shape of it is. So yeah, it's very much a process of discovery and I have tried outlining before but it just doesn't work for me because if I outline I feel that I've already told the story and I'm just not motivated to write it properly yeah so. no I've, I've lived that one so it, it's it, it's it's funny because I coming from kind of a film editorial background mm -hmm. you know I, I really understand or I, or I don't understand I usually you know approach something in, in kind of a sequential uh order and I don't even really necessarily I always edit that way mm -hmm. but um but there is a structure and um, and the, I think the the irony is that so so the two uh, the book that that I have on submission right now and and the one that I'm writing started with outlines and I think I kind of out clevered myself you know thinking that that you know th because they were an outline all these things actually really connected to each other and, mm -hmm. and you know and obviously as you write the fidelity of that you know comes and goes and in my case it probably goes more than anything um, and often. Times I think I way out clever myself, um, and uh, but I so I, I feel like I it's nice to have a rough a rough frame to something, um, but I kind of feel like next time I'm going to start from from scratch, uh, and um, and weirdly, uh, I, I now kind of have this orbit of other other authors, all of which who are dark, by the way. And so, like, my whole world has pulled towards kind of a, a, a darker side, which is more, kind of more burden esque than anything, but, um, or Edward Gorey ish type of thing, like, kind of whimsical Gorey. Um, but, uh, but it's really interesting because now I want to write without an outline just to see if there really truly is a difference or if I'm just, I'm just uh, thinking that I'm doing something that I'm really not doing. Um, but, but I'm always fascinated by process because, um, you know, I think that there are people that, that, that hold to one and, and, and I actually really appreciate craft a lot. I think one of the things that, that I, um, I, I think I am a wildly creative person. I don't think that I, and this is the new part of being a writer. I'm really appreciating where I don't have craft. Um, and so seeing that in other writers and how they approach things um, is, is, is so fascinating. Um, so, you know, someone like you who's done this countless times already is, 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 is kind of cool to, to kind of get, get your two cents. Um, maybe I do, of, 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 your, of your products, you know, are, you know, do you, how often are you surprised? Um, well, quite a lot of the time, like, even sort of like when I'm even up to sort of like later drafts, I'll just suddenly like throw in an extra twist just because like I think of it and I just think like I really like think it can work and it like, well, my twists usually start by me sort of like thinking what's the wildest thing that can happen here that like I have not sort of anticipated at all. So then I'll put that twist in and then like my edits afterwards are going back to make that twist sort of like work because I don't want it to be so out there that it's just sort of unbelievable. But um, yeah, like I, I do get a lot of surprise when I am writing and that is one of the parts of the writing process that really appeals to me. But I did find when I was writing the last book in my Untamed series that I didn't have as much flexibility there for um, sort of like writing with like this sense of freedom because I had to mm. wrap up the entire series and all the like ongoing plot lines and like the subplots, everything had to come together. Right. And I remember when I was writing that book, I felt like it was just such a heavy and dense book um, because I did have to outline quite a lot of it so that I wasn't like forgetting stuff. And that made me sort of like feel very bogged down by it because I wasn't 
sort of like surprising myself I wasn't throwing in these twists that had me sort of like on the edge of my seat like waiting to see what happened next yeah there wasn't as much room for that and I remember I got about halfway through the first draft um just sort of like following this outline and I really hated the story and it just didn't seem authentic to the type of story that I like to write and it didn't seem authentic to my characters either because the tone of um, the first three books was so different to the tone of the fourth book. And I think it was because I had outlined it and I hadn't sort of like given myself that creative freedom. So yeah. I actually ended up rewriting that book completely. And I just thought, OK, I'm going to write the fourth book as if it isn't the fourth book. So I still got that creative freedom. And then during the edits, I then combined it with the earlier draft that I'd written um, where it had like all the outlining stuff to make all the subplots make sense. And it meant that the fourth book was massive compared to the other books. And like right. my draft was like nearly 200,000 words. So it's just ridiculous. But I was then able to sort of like get the balance of tying everything up and still having these elements of surprise and sort of like it feeling really exciting to me as a writer. So then my like, it took me a long time to edit that book purely because I was trying to like cut the word down, word count down so much just to sort of like get it more in line with the other books. But um. Yeah, I definitely need to be surprised when I'm writing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like you said, you write um, pretty much like in sequence. Um, yeah, I ha you know, it's uh, so the so the book that I'm writing right now, which is which is a portal fantasy, um, I wound up having to jump around because I, I had some real gaps in in logic in in my world. And actually, one of the funny things about that I've that I've experienced so far is is wanting to be someone who writes things that are magical realism. Mm -hmm. I always wind up like I, this is a completely fantastic world. However, it's just not magical, and I don't mean that it's not exciting. It's just magic. Like there's no magic system because there doesn't need to be. So mm -hmm. I, I when I when I outline something, I kind of I wind up putting in, I think a lot of cases these real. Um, like placeholders for like here is where magic happens or these these yeah. are magical scenes but i get there and i realize that they're much more just they're just more emotional than they are than they require anything paranormal or magical and um and so i wound up jumping around to write later in to, to kind of bookend kind of my my middle um, so I really know what I'm writing to, and and I I almost scrapped this latest manuscript because, uh, to your point, I felt so accountable to tying mm -hmm. up the loose ends I created, and at the end I don't know if I cared about them, and mm -hmm. and so it, it was um, which was really scary to be quite honest because I invested a lot in this and I felt really good about it. And this is something I wanted to write a trilogy on. And, and now I'm tight, right? It might be a sequel, but uh, 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 because I feel a little fatigued, I think mm -hmm. by you know by by the end of 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 holding accountable, and which I think you need to be, uh, you know, you need to tell a story, and the story needs to be meaningful. And and if it's just if it's just dream conscious, then you know your writing better be gorgeous. But um, so uh, yeah, so I think jumping around has allowed me just writing short scenes. Um, has allowed me to frame things a little bit differently, um, and and I think you may you said something, or I'm going to paraphrase is 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 kind of getting to the bigger point, the 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 higher, you know, what or what's the craziest thing that could happen here? Um, yeah. So kind of pushing, you know, what I think my, are my my bookends of something. Um, you know, I uh, that's something that I I feel I look in an outline. Um, I don't allow myself to do is kind of push out of my constraints. Um, and so I'm, I'm appreciating, we're trying to appreciate when that needs to happen. Yeah, definitely. It's like, I can't write if I've got constraints at all. Um, but I'm kind of like in awe of like these writers that can like outline and stick really well to the outline. Because I was talking to CL Taylor um, a couple of weeks ago, and she has tried pretty much every sort of like way to write a book. She's outlined, she's not outlined, and she's done like everything sort of like in between. Um, doing all with like different structural methods and I'm a massive fan of her books and pretty much every book that she's written it still has these amazing twists and it's still got like the same high level of tension and I'm just amazed that she's able to do that um, when she's both outlining and not outlining and using all these different structures so yeah I think it's sort of like about finding the way that works for you as a writer and sometimes that does vary depending on the project 
um, like with my latest manuscript, well, one of the latest ones that I'm working on, um, I'm writing it in like a non-linear way, which isn't really something I've done before. Um, because you're very like, usually when I'm sort of like writing a first draft, I'm just trying to have as much fun as possible and make it exciting and new for me and like giving myself loads of freedom. I do generally tend to write in chronological order there, but with like this latest one, I've kind of got no idea what the story is about. And I feel that I almost need to know the ending before I then try yeah. and write the beginning. But I'm yeah. sure even once I've written the beginning and the ending, like even if I do the ending first, when I then go to revise it all, it's all going to end up completely different because it's still going to be me writing that first draft just for me to know who the characters are, what the story is, what the shape of the manuscript will be. Right. And I just think it's really interesting how different manuscripts and different projects almost call for them to be written in different ways. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that you know, uh, kind of a creature of, of creative process and and both you know, visual and and musical and and literary. Like I. I I, I don't. I think you have a discipline, and you have a uh, yeah, and you have a uh, a voice of inspiration, and they constantly fight between each other. And so I think it's it's how do you create the right um, the right friction between mm -hmm. those where 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 uh, where it's good friction, um, mm -hmm. where where again they they kind of push against each other and 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 hold you kind of um, open you up or hold you more accountable to what it is that you're doing. And in many cases, it's your it's the why, and I think that's the that's one of the things that I I've run into a couple times now is 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 why am I writing this, mm -hmm. um, or do I need to have a big why you know uh, for this? Um, and I do think that there's a um, a publishing um, wish, <laughs> uh, unwritten wish that that things have a you know deeper meaning to them. Um, mm -hmm. And some things are are, are just are kind of what they are, or they're 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 the they're they're the arc, and they go from here to there, and they are kind of the, the experience. So I don't think everything has to be um, uh, mind boggling, um, but I get, I've got caught up in that. Is and I think that's also taking me off writing what I wanted to write in some cases, mm -hmm. which is uh, I need to have some conformity here, or this has to bring back and and, and do something, and and those are all the the points where I just everything gets tensed up and you can hear it in the voice um, mm -hmm. and and they just kind of like they just die in the vine I think in, in many cases so yeah I, I, I don't know if I subscribe, subscribe to one process or another but I mean you're you're going to a you're going to a, a you know a master's program right for yeah. mm -hmm. for and so so what's the focus I'm actually really interested in this too because I've I've talked with other writers about um, you know if I'm going to go back and look at uh, a deepening my craft or or uh, advanced education on this, you know, how should I be looking at it? Um, especially someone like you, who's who's written a, a bunch of books. You know, do you have a particular bent on on kind of what you're looking for and and what the structure of that education is? Um, yeah. So, like the course that I've chosen is one that's very much craft based and also incorporates a lot of workshops because I think workshops with other writers are just so invaluable and. Um, because like at the moment I'm very sort of familiar with writing YA but then mm -hmm. I want to move into sort of like writing middle grade as well and I feel that I need sort of like more help craft wise on that and just to get more familiar with the genre but then I've also got a memoir that I've been writing um about like the years when I had the brain information and everything to do with that and I just feel that bit out of my depth with writing a memoir so the course yeah. that I've chosen is one where I can sort of like divide it up between writing for children and creative non-fiction so I can sort of really focus on the areas where I feel that I want to improve and that I need to improve further but then at the same time um, anything that I do learn like with the craft it can be applied pretty much across any readership and genre and I do think that sort of like always striving to improve your craft is just like so important. Um, and yeah, and like I'm I'm really looking forward to it um, with um, like the structure of the course as well, because I'm on the part time distance learning one. So um, like obviously that can all go ahead without like all the restrictions with COVID at the moment, because a lot of the courses at that university sure. are cancelled and most people are ending up deferring for a year. But because um, they offer this course face to face as well, but then now sort of like seeing if they can transfer as many face to face students onto the distance learning one as well. Yeah. So 
it's going to be a much bigger cohort but it also means that we're going to meet a lot more writers and I just think the more writers that you can meet and especially like working with them in workshops um because when I did my BA degree um that was like four years ago I finished that and I found the, the workshops just so helpful there um just like hearing sort of like other people's opinions and then also like reading their stories and learning how to critique each other's work like that yeah. just made me very much stronger a writer and especially if like you're critiquing a genre that you don't necessarily write yourself but you can still always find things in your critique that you can then also apply to your own writing and I just think it helps you sort of like look at your own work in a new way so yeah like since well I've actually been sort of like wanting to do this MA for quite a while since finishing my BA but I was just I wasn't really sure like when to do it or where and I was just I, I'd spend like years just sort of like saying to my parents oh yeah I'm gonna do an MA soon and then I just thought well I actually need to actually start it because I could just go on forever saying I'm gonna do it but um yeah like I'm really looking forward to it yeah I, I, well, I'm super jealous I, I, it's something that I that I've been kind of looking at um and in many cases kind of backfill where I think that um or even shake out of 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 certain types of uh storytelling tropes that I've lived with, you know, for decades. And, uh, and so, uh, and the idea of, of actually people that, and also people that know how to critique. And mm -hmm. I think there's like a lot of people that give opinions, but then there's, I, I don't think you need to write, you, you, you align genres with genre. I actually think it's better that, that you don't. Mm -hmm. um, I think you learn more by, um, by experience in that way. So, um, and I think that if it's, you know, I'm looking, for, I've been looking for a course that's much more based off shared experience than it is by, uh, you know, opinions. Um, mm -hmm. cause I just think that they're obviously more valuable. Um, but, uh, yeah, well, if it's good, let me know. So yeah, well, I, I want, I, I want to move my family to, uh, to the UK any rate. So, uh, so I can, um, Maybe we, we're, we're dying to, to, to live there and, and have that experience and, and school is one of them, but for oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so. Cool. Yeah, so um, what advice do you have for those wanting to start writing middle grade or no matter <laughs> anything in particular, I suppose, like any sort of leadership? Um, you know, I, uh, geez, well, I mean, I guess the, the short answer is, do it. I, um, I'll kind of answer that, but by just saying that um, I'm compelled to do it. I, I find that it's a challenge, uh, a personal challenge. And, and I think that's what holds me um, accountable to wanting to do it. Um, the fun, I, I actually, I don't know if it's fun or not, to be, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I think for people that are that are getting into in, in particular into middle grade is, mm -hmm. you know, there um, you have to change your mindset um, and you have to look at the world a little differently. Um, I think that a lot of people that write in that genre kind of live in that place a little bit, um, mm -hmm. not to say that they're adult children, um, but there's a, a um, there's a simplicity of thought that I think that needs to be embraced. I don't again mean that it's simple. Um, it's it's uh, it's it's unfettered, I guess, in that in that way. It's um, and so opening yourself um, to the world uh, and going back to the kind of your 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 childhood self. Um, uh, I think you have to be prepared to do that if you're going to really make that journey. Um, yeah. And I think for a lot of people that I've talked to that write in that, um, it can throw them into a different place where they're actually really go back and dealing with some things that they might um, not realize that they're dealing with. So, so there is kind of a um, be vulnerable, I think, to yourself and be self-aware as mm -hmm. much as anything about, uh, you know, have, have a good idea to write and, and a reason to tell a story. Um, but I, and I do think that, uh, that in that, you know, the responsibility to me is that's when kids are, are, are falling in love with reading. Mm -hmm. um, and as someone who I mentioned to you before, you know, I, 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 I'm horribly dyslexic mm -hmm. and I, it wasn't even uh, diagnosed until I went to college. So I had formulated all sorts of hacks all through school, but it really took me away from like, I was so scared to read out loud when I was a child. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And, and so I would hide in class, you know, when, when things, you know, it came time to do that. And I didn't have someone that really understood that and also um, really told me that it was more about the value of my ideas than whether the, 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 how, how good a technician I was at reading. Um, and so it really stunted me about the, the books I chose and the ways that I challenged myself. So for me, I think that um, middle grade, I think all writers, but middle grade writers in particular um, have, um, uh, have an opportunity and maybe a little bit of responsibility to, um, to adhere to that. So, um, or, or at least, at least I do. Um, otherwise it's, you know, get ready for the long haul. I mean, I, I haven't even reached an end yet to know whether or not, um, uh, whether or not it's all worth it. But I, but I, so it's also, I think it's having different measurements of success. Um, because for me, if, 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 if I had the luxury of being able to tell stories to people for the rest of my life, I can't think of anything better to do. So, um, so I think that that you know if 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 that's if that's where you kind of start and end that then then go do it in that in that regard. I mean, I mean, how about for you? Yeah, definitely. Like, I just I have to write. If I don't write, I just I don't feel like myself. It's like a huge part of my identity. So yeah, like, I'm just I'm happy writing just for the rest of my life, pretty much. But um, yeah, like in terms of advice for people, I'd say to write what you want to write rather than what you think you should be writing. Yeah. Like often, like I know when I first started out writing, I felt like this huge pressure to write a certain type of book because I felt like that would be the type of book that was popular. But Mm -hmm. then I wasn't connecting to the story. I wasn't connecting to the characters. It didn't feel like the type of story that I wanted or needed to write. And as soon as I started writing the kind of thing that I was really interested in, like it all flowed so much better. I found like my craft was improving at a much quicker rate. And I felt more invested in the story and I just I found it a much more um like pleasing process and it, mm-hmm. it felt less like work. So I think um yeah, just like having fun about what you're writing and like but also sort of like working out why exactly you are writing it and if that and and working out the reasons for why you're writing it and whether they're sort of like gonna lead you towards your goals. Like mm-hmm. what like, like you said, because there's different measures of success. Um and yeah, I just think it's like really important to enjoy writing because I'm I'm sure that like readers will be able to tell if you're not enjoying it because it's going to come across in the writing. Sure. You know, it's funny, you made me think one more thing, which is, and this is kind of uh, part of that is, is, is have a community. I think the, the hardest thing um, that I found, actually, I find a lot of authors incredibly um, open and sharing. And I think that the community is wonderful. I think everyone is uh, like, like the only community I've met recently that's like as sharing are like microbrewers <laughs> or, like, or like farmers, you know, I, I honestly, it's, 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 uh, they want to see, you know, uh, they want to see your success. Um, and so, um, but finding a good group of, of critique partners or a small and, 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 and allowing yourself, to, allowing yourself to be read. Um, that's something that, that I need to practice much more early on. Um, you know, I, I found like a, I have like a little tribe of, of middle grade kids that are, I can use kind of as a guinea pig. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're awesome because they take me through the paces. I mean, they, they just, they just destroy me. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but they're, they're amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like with, I think without that, um, I feel I'd be lost because it's such a solo sport, you know, you know, otherwise, but, uh, yeah, but I'm with you. It's just like it's. I kind of feel like I need to do it, yeah. um, and I'll later decide if I like it or not. <laughs> it gets in that way. So, yeah. well, uh, thank you for for uh, for including me in this. I think it's really fantastic that you are uh, are going through the process and getting other writers' voices in the mix and and providing this as a resource. Um, and and I hope that other people that get to watch them. Um, you know, get to appreciate as much as, as those of us who get to partake in them. But um, I think you've done a really, really nice job offering a, a, a service um, and, and, I, and I hope it's able to grow. I think it's really cool. Yeah, thank you so much for joining me. And like, this has been a really great discussion about like YA and middle grade. Cause yeah, it's like, it's, re- it's really good when it's like a topic that we're both really interested in as well. And yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Madeline. Thank you.